Beep, 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 beep. A Radio Step Zero broadcast. Another night, another another uh, good night sketch to do, and I've got to pull a post-it out of the prompt machine. Looks like we got our prompt is instrument. <laughs> instrument. It's kind of kind of broad. All right, instrument it is. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Give me red. Give me red. Give me a red. Let's just okay. Um, let's see what we do here. I guess we'll kind of need like a. Let's try just going back to back to kind of gray. All right, so. Got a tree. Some sort of a tree, right? Let's, let's give it a separation. I was like that trunk separation, you know? And a little. Yeah. All right. Oh. Mm. Good enough. Okay. So I'll start by putting in the body here. Yeah, I would have uh, would have come on earlier, but I was hanging out with my wife, and we were having a, just a great time. Great time being a married couple, watching a show, eating, having dinner. You know that stuff's important. Comics are great, but. You gotta make room for those people in your lives, you know. I gotta let's get on to this a little later. That's what I say. Let's see here. I'm trying to think of how this might go. Try to, gosh, what in the world? Guess that would come down like this. Hi, Citizen Ronan. Welcome to the nest once again for another nighttime sketch stream. I suppose this would go here and yeah, that there. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose we could do that. Kind of reminds me a little bit of that Robin Hood minstrel. You know, the one that was... You know, let's give him like a... More of like a spit curl. Kind 
kind of thing. Do-do-do-do-do-do. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, that'll work just fine. We'll just we'll do that. What's the theme here? Says Rona says, well, I took a uh, post-it out of the the post-it note um, thing and it said instrument, nothing more. So I guess apparently when I was making these up. I was just going for like really vague type prompts. Yeah, so I could just get to do whatever I wanted with them. I guess. So. So we'll do. We'll do. An instrument. We'll we'll have a, a chicken rooster playing a playing a guitar. Noah, welcome in. Welcome to the nest. Coloring and listening. Hey, that's cool. What you coloring? More work on your book. That's cool. Let's see here. Yeah, it's one of those weird things you know it's 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 i think this is the path to uh to getting better is just you know not only that pressure of taking something completely random you know but something that you might not have been able to draw but you might not have drawn before and doing that live so you have to get it done Marcus Killiger, welcome, welcome to the nest. Noah says, yes, coloring from a page from my book. So close to wrapping up the colors on this page. It's exciting. I'm happy for you, man. It's always, it's 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 great to have a uh, a book done. I mean, there's there's really nothing like it in the world, that feeling. But, um, you know, those little battles of getting a page, a page done and then, you know, being able to watch those pile up is, it's really a wonderful thing too. Um, you look back after a while of just, and there's you've got a ton of those already done and built up. It's it's a great feeling. Good luck. Keep on going. Kind of like foghorn leghorn. All right, not bad, not bad. I suppose maybe I'll fix that tree. I kind of like it to go a little, a little more interestingly. Now I was thinking today about just the arts in general and how it's something that almost anybody can can do, but. It, it's really meant it's not meant for everybody you know, i mean like as far as like a job mind you some people you know it's 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 more or less just maybe supposed to be a hobby it's a lot like a relationship you know what i mean like like you can absolutely get into a relationship no problem but you know if it's not meant to be it's going to be a tough there's going to be a tough go of it but you can make it work you get in there um it's a lot like it's a lot like say comics some people that just you know it's really not for them and they won't admit it i mean sometimes you know when someone says maybe you need to pull back and just kind of have it as something something for yourself you know it can be tough to uh it could be tough to like discern whether or not that's just like on pencil it could be tough to discern whether that's like a naysaying voice or if that's like the honest to goodness, like maybe, maybe this should just be a hobby. <laughs> but you know, if you're, if you're doing everything and you've made it and you still, you know, you get there and it's just, you're not feeling like, like you're, um, 
what do you call it, like fulfilled, you know, that might be it. Oh, uh, you know what else this reminds me of? There's an old Don Bluth movie named Rockadoodle. <laughs> he had this like crazy voice and he's like, Rockadoo. I remember that from my childhood. Don Bluth had some weird movies. He had like Rover Dangerfield. Remember that with Rodney Dangerfield? And he had like um one bunch of weird stuff. Everybody knows like all dogs go to heaven. Five of Goes West, you know, like American Tale and stuff. Um, but uh, I said, I said, now you got me thinking of Foghorn Leghorn, boy. <laughs> That's what Citizen Ronan's saying without the boy. Uh, the one where he's trying to teach his his hen's nerdy son. I got it. You know what? I've got my wife at one point knowing I love me some Looney Tunes. She got me like this big, huge six uh, collection set. It's like there's like six discs in each set and there's six sets in the box set um i gotta look that i gotta watch more of those they um they always made me laugh when they brought it back they they really dumbed it down make that look like a stylish hair you know there we go not bad. That's not bad for not knowing what I was going to do, how I was going to do it. I got to start saving these. Maybe I'll put an art book together, like, you know, call it like a hundred good nights or something like that. You know? Great face. Thanks. Says Ronan. Yeah. Um, where was that? Oh yeah, like Don Bluth. It, it, it's interesting to look at his at his films not from like an entertainment lens, right? But from a creative lens, because for a moment, just a brief moment in time, he was taking on Disney and kicking their butts. Uh, I saved the pirate one, huh? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I've I've got it. I mean, obviously it's it's on it's on X or Twitter or whatever you're gonna call it, mind you. But but yeah, I didn't I didn't actually save that one uh, in its like file form. This one maybe I'll save. No, I'll save the prompt ones. Yeah maybe do like a black and white book or something like that like kind of cheap i don't know not printing anything for a little while just because of the, the house repairs i had to go through um but you know what we do when we can't print something you you just you go ahead and and build your your pile there you Get a project done, you complete it, and you put it, put it aside. Do something else, you know. Yeah. Hmm. Was Don Bluth from Disney or Warner's? Don Bluth was from Disney. He uh, he was around during the sad 70s, you know what I mean? Like, so he, I think the last movie he worked on was The Rescuers. He was around for The Black Cauldron. Um, and they had like two or three just bad movies right in a row. Like there's those two movies. And then there was, uh, I want to say Oliver and Company. Didn't do well at all. Um they were he left because he said disney's out of ideas they're creatively bankrupt and then he went on to do you know he did like land before time all dogs go to heaven american for a while he was on fire then then you know he kept on trying and the budgets got smaller and smaller he got stuff like troll in central park and thumbelina and the pebble of the penguin and and i think he did i want to say he did swan princess anastasia might have been him 
Um, we are back. He had a huge, huge output for one guy. Like, it's impressive. Yeah. Oh, Secret and Nim. Who the who could forget that one? Um, and for like a while, like I said, he had Disney. Like, they were really embarrassed, embarrassing themselves before they got on. Like, you know, guys like John Lasseter and Brad Bird, Tim Burton. They started making stuff like, uh, well, that was around like when the Little Mermaid forward started. And they kind of saved them. Um, I go back and I've, I've looked at some of those 70s ones with like a uh, more of an analytical lens. You know? Yeah, I like the style of his movies. He, they, they stuck with you. And he always had like a, a gut-wrenching scene in almost every movie. He, I mean, like the... Uh, the Land Before Time had the death of the mom. You know, like, spoiler alert. <laughs> the Land for, Before Time, of course, had the mom. All Dogs Go to Heaven, the very the end of it was was a hard one for a lot of people that I, I know. Um, you had, uh, uh, well, shoot, who could forget? It was like the owl. Everybody remembers the owl from uh, Secret of Nim. Freaky, creepy owl. Um, but yeah, Little, Little Mermaid did turn it around for Disney, and then they just... Which is funny. If I remember right, Tim Burton, he did Frank and Weenie somewhere around the late 80s, mid 80s or something like that. And at the time, Disney was like, the company was appalled. They were just like, what the heck is this? This is disgusting. So, you know, he kind of almost got, I guess, I suppose, fired. But then later on, of course, you you know the tale. They, they're like, holy crap. Hey, you want to you wanna do one of your sweet animated movies? Frank and me, I have it. I haven't actually watched it. I think I saw the uh, the live action short from when I was a kid. They used to play it every Halloween on like the Disney Channel back before it became horrible. That was, you know, but um, you know, I it might be just me, and I don't, I don't know, but I mean, I think there is a place. For the Disney style storytelling, you know, like, especially in America, um, they've they seem to, to my eye, they've lost their way, and I feel like every twenty years or so, Disney gets to twenty or thirty years or so, they get into a rut. They they you know they did I talk about this before? I feel like I did. They um they was almost they were almost bankrupt in World War II. Then after after that, it was like the seventies. They were almost done, and then the 90s, the late, late 90s, and then after that, now. So, I, I feel like that's almost my, that's almost, uh, should be my mission, is to, like, learn that Disney style, or the animated kind of style like this, and bring that kind of fun back. That adventure, the slapstick, the comedy, the, you know, the heart uh with something that isn't you know questionable something you don't have to worry about because I mean Disney's been really off storytelling wise for a good long time and you know I don't even say this is like like an incredible fan like when I watch this stuff uh yeah might have been touched on a Friday stream yeah um when I watch this stuff nowadays it's it's a lot more for like you know, like, uh, study. Um, I'm, I, I mean, they're great stories and stuff like that, but I don't really pop in a Disney movie and be like, oh yeah, I can't wait to watch this movie. Like a lot of times it's, it's now it's kind of to, to sit and look at how it works to kind of like reverse engineer it, learn some, you know, stuff from it. Uh, so you can get stuff like this a little easier, right? <laughs> um, Because I, I think that that kind of storytelling is, it, it really is timeless. Um, but, you know, most people, they love they love it. They'll recognize something like, oh, that takes me back to childhood when I was, you know, when I didn't watch a Disney movie or something. And everybody as a kid had their favorite Disney movie. I remember when I was a little kid, it was, uh, it was Great Mouse Detective, which also was a commercial failure. Go figure. But, um... But that that one for me was probably my favorite when I was a chick. Yeah, exactly. When I was a little little chick in the nest. Um, but I I think that 
you know, most people get it get it twisted that you know they're kids' movies and stuff. Walt, Walt just wanted to make do things that you couldn't at the time. I mean, at, at that point when like Sleeping Beauty came out, you wouldn't have been able to see anything like that dragon scene. I mean, that movie made a ton of money, but it, it was a lot like John Carter, right? Same kind of mistake. John Carter was really expensive. It cost like $400 million to make because it was uh, shot on film. And the studio wanted to punish the director, so they didn't market it. But it, it made a bunch of money. It just did not make enough because it was such an expensive movie. And you might have noticed that they didn't have any, you know, like book tie-ins or anything like that when it came out. No toys. That's because the studio was punishing him. The guy's like, ah, I think I want to do this on film, like in the olden days, not digital. And that cost a lot of money. And most people that I know, they didn't hate that movie at all. A lot of people really liked John Carter of Mars. Not Warlord of Mars, obviously. They probably didn't want to use the word war, Lord. And I'm sure, like, uh, you know, they wanted a totally unique title so that they could they could earn it or own it. You know what I mean? Like, but, um, but, um, this guitar is a little weird. Um, got off to it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sleeping Beauty, like, you know, if you pause that movie, every single scene is, like, perfectly shot to be look like a painting. And, um... I honestly think that, you know, as well as in books and stuff like entertainment, that kind of crazy wonder and imagination, the slapstick adventure type, like Donald, you know, DuckTales, like Donald and Mickey and stuff, they used to do all that kind of stuff. Um, they did adventure perfectly. And it's somehow it's lost. They do really stupid stuff now. It's, it's, I think it's salting. Uh, Citizen Rona said, I said this in the last discussion. I grew up on the hand-drawn animation. I really miss that. If they went back to that or some, uh, they could use in marketing back to our roots. I don't know. And yeah, I remember that. I, I think, you know, they still kind of do it for TV. I'd love to see it in the movie. The last one, of course, was Princess and the Frog. And I'll tell you the truth. I don't even know that that one did all that well. So maybe that was like their their test. I know Lasseter fought hard to get that in. He's like Disney's, you know, does 2D hand-drawn animation. So... Oh, Marcus Kilgore says, I thought you might like Fern Gully. I remember watching it as a kid and, uh, you know, growing up, <laughs> Tim Curry is the, is the big cloud of smoke. Interesting. Interesting. But boy, oh boy, is that like a Greenpeace propaganda type movie or what? My goodness. Um, memorable, though. I remember it. Not my favorite, mind you. Um. Wow, look at that. That doesn't look too bad. Hey, I don't hate it. It could be better, but I don't hate it. Yeah, I'll give him, give him some. Try that. Birds and all. Yeah. Let's get rid of that hard edge there. There we go. Um, but I, I do think that that's something that... The only problem is nowadays, even though they are kind of all-age movies, um, you look at like Rescuers Down Under is all about a poacher trying to kill an eagle, you know, and, and uh, a kid trying to keep the thing safe. They are all-ages movies, but, you know, just because it's animated whatnot usually it's it just kind of like a, no it's it's for kids not like unlike batman adventures you remember the i just got that omnibus it's coming to me it's like 1200 pages <laughs> whole run of the original thing but those were those were uh episodes in in comic form you know they were simple they look like that but since they were drawn simple a lot of people just decided hey it's a kid's book even though the writing you know was still that same kind of decent storytelling you'd get from the from the um From the cartoon you know what i'm gonna try i'm gonna try uh let's say we just go ahead and watercolor this without inking it for once see what it looks like okay a little darker than that 
get a little more paint than that. Blending mode, paper texture. What else we got here? Oh, that's cool. All right, we'll just give me. Jim Cox, welcome to the nest. Good evening. The prompt for today is instrument. That's what I pulled from the machine, so that's what we're working on. I had to make it more difficult. It couldn't just be statistical zero. Oh, A-Line, by the way, I don't know if I saw you uh, in there. But welcome to the nest. I don't remember if I said hello to you or not. Um, is there any streams going on right now? I saw Mandy was doing like her... Pete had another interview, which I haven't quite gotten to. Like I said, I was kind of hanging out with my wife and having a great time. Um, Mandy had like 15K subscriber celebration or something. Um, and past that, I don't, I don't know what else is going on. Yeah. I guess this is one of those shows where it's like, just easy going you can like you can come and go as you please if you want to watch it on replay that's cool if you want to be here live and talking sounds that's great oh good i'm glad i did i'm glad i don't want to ignore anybody so yeah we uh chat was canceled today because i guess reasons um so I thought, now it's extra. Extra got to come on here. They on hiatus, but I ain't. Trying to do what I can for... Although, from what I understand, from what I've been seeing on my... On my screen, like the... The hiatus curse is reared its ugly head. Yes, that's right. There is and always has been and always will be drama. Nothing we can do about it. Nothing we can do but just stream and talk about movies and comics and have a good time. <laughs> Cicerona says, I prefer this kind of stream. I'm tired of the big streams, to be honest. Well, yeah. I suppose. They ain't for everybody. Boy, oh boy, when they were. Remember when everybody was just tuning in and we'd all just be there? Jim Cox says it's September, too. I think all, uh, things always get weird on the internet in September. You, really? You think so? Just September? Is that like the, the Monday of of, uh, of months? Maybe? Marcus Killiger says, I tried watching Mandy's stream, but she didn't have too many CG comic creators on. I, I, I looked in. I saw, I think I saw Heel versus Babyface. They probably talked about his rant that everybody's been talking about. Uh, I saw, no, that's true. I, I, I think it was uh, I think it was a lot of fandom slash Midnight's Edge people that time around. So, hmm. What's the uh, by the by? What's the complementary color for brown? I believe the complementary color for brown is blue. Yes. So guess what color he's going to be? He's going to be blue. There we go. Yeah. Is that a turkey or a chicken? You know, I'm not 100% sure. I'm leaning towards chicken. <laughs> it's a bird. It's just like me. We don't ask. We don't assume it's... Oh, you can assume it's, it's species all you want. Uh, Cicerona says it was kind of like a reunion before she became big in CG. She hung out with those guys too. Did she? I didn't know that. That she was like hanging out with like Heels versus Baby Face and and uh, I don't know who else is there. Like Mahler or I don't even know names anymore. Guys have been on a loop. You know? I've been on a loop. I've been, oh, you know what? I made a big mistake. Leave that tree on its own separate thing so I can just do this 
and then a race. Um, I don't want to say I'm getting a little jaded. I'm not. I still love comics, and, and, and I'm you know I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to be that guy that's like, you know what? It's not fun around here anymore, so I'm going to quit. Sometimes I need a break. Uh, you know, like everybody does from and should have from social media, you know. Um, but I, I am getting jaded with the, uh, you know, I suppose like, geez, I don't want to say this. Like, this is going to sound like, you know, a condemnation of everybody, but, but no, just like, uh, the more creative YouTube centric type people that like really want to focus on views and, and yeah, like there's drama because EVS is fulfilling and his haters come out. Yeah. Um, I, you know, there's always somebody looking for an angle, whether it's, you know, a streamer or not. But I mean, it's just like the 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 politics of social media. Really, I get tired of sometimes because I'm a cartoonist. You're right. I, this is what I do. I, I draw. I like talking to you guys and I like drawing. Hey, j -Bot, welcome to the nest. Um, it's not my my intention to really climb up the ladder. You know, if if. If I, if I move in that direction, I get bigger. Okay, I'll deal with it if it comes. And if not, guys, this is a hobby. This is, this is what I do for fun. And one thing that I've learned about dealing with other creatives, right? You, you like to think that it's going to be like you hear those stories about like, you know, J.R.R. Tolkien and, and like, uh, C.S. Lewis and stuff, you know, they had the, the Inklings or the Groundlings. Or is it the Inklings? One of the two. Um, they sit and they talk about their stuff and they give each other advice and they listen, you know, and, and I like that. I don't like that. But it's, it's like it was really, you know, like constructive time. You know? But I don't feel like that happens as much when you get like a lot of comic book creatives together. It, uh, it, it it seems, you know, there's more guarding the ideas. There's like, if one gets popular, the other one starts to get angry. Because, uh, you know, it's like, we're all supposed to be in this together. We're all supposed to get popular together. And there's sometimes there's the jealousy. We've seen it all before. But uh, you don't see that as much with, like, fans. You know, mostly it's fans want to, you know, depending on the fan, they just maybe want the book or they want to hang out and talk or... Whatever, I, I find that refreshing. I like that. I don't want to take sides in media fights. And I don't want to have opinions on crap that I have nothing to do with. Um, I've seen that on streams before where it's like, hey, this creator did this and said this and reacted like this. What do you think about that? And this other creator that has absolutely nothing. You see it on the bros sometimes, you know, like say Graham Nolan or, or uh, Andy totally side or you know like blindsided by this thing that they they almost feel like they have to give an opinion on when really there's no reason to have the opinion you don't need an opinion about everything i believe that mark skilger says i agree the clickbait streams get tiresome there's only so much that can be said about disney right and you know i will say like like as far as disney is concerned i i respect the old disney um for the innovation and story and stuff like that. I'm by no means a guy that's like, yeah, Disney. I, I like the nuts and bolts of it. It's almost like wrestling. I don't really watch wrestling, but the background parts of it, I find interesting how the, how the whole thing is run. Um, Jim Cox's Mandy's on Flashcast now. I never watched a whole show of that. Not interested in most topics. Is that another one that goes on for four to six hours? I, was, I don't know. I don't know how, how people can do that. JBot says, I hear you. I just want to hang out, draw with my buddies. And sometimes you get sucked in. Yeah. And I mean, I understand sometimes, you know, oh, shoot. Citizen Rona's got an opinion about my opinion. I got to tread lightly. <laughs> um, I, I understand sometimes, you know, you just, you kind of discuss it. And in some cases, you're going to have what, what is like a generalized kind of, you know, you're, you're more commenting on the behavior than you are the actual creator um but at the same time <laughs> that 
there are some that that doesn't really make a difference to. And I think that's the kind of thing that I've been getting tired of. Um, you, you don't necessarily need to comment on absolutely every piece of drama that comes down the pipe. And you don't need to take sides. You know what I mean? But then again, that's the problem, right? That's the ongoing problem is like, that's, and I hate using this word. Y'all know me. I hate using it. That's content. Um, and some people are just dying for it. They're starving for it. So they got to find anything that they can. And if there's like a, there's an altercation on Twitter, you know, that's like chum in the waters, <laughs> Um, now me, I'm trying like crazy to find other things to talk about because there are other things to talk about. I mean, for example, J bots vibing on the new Mickey mouse stuff. I've been hearing, I, I, I want to say, what is that? Like those, some of those shorts, like that Chris Dianopolis or whatever that voiced him. Um, I saw a few of them miss. Some were really good. Some were, eh. I feel like that was just one of those things where they were like, just do whatever you want. We don't care. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to trying to learn this animation stuff to make my art and my comics when I really get to them better. And I feel like... I feel like it has had an effect. One second. Let me remove this for a moment. And let me get into some files here. I mean... Take it, take it for example, if I can find it, here it is, here, oh, come on, don't open it with this program, hi, how you doing, I'm big, I always knew I'd make it big, <laughs> all right, so here we go, photos, this here, was the very first Statistical Zero comic strip. Look at how freaking garbage this is. Look at this. What is this? What is this right here? Like, like, uh, it's flat and weird, and it looks like it's like a cone, something weird. It don't, doesn't even have any tail feathers. What's going on with this wing? It's very wrong. Jbot says apparently they have a Mickey Mouse rulebook for all their projects and they didn't give it to that guy. <laughs> I can see that. Um, but I mean, you know, this was this was 2020 right here. First time I ever drew this strip. And see, we got any like more recent ones? Tons uh, of them in here. My latest one. See the bones of what my style would become. Yeah. Oh, this one was probably second or third. I think. Yeah, it, it was weird. Like it took me a while to really nail down <laughs> that face. I love it. It took me a while to really nail down this design. Um. But eventually I got it and honestly I got it more consistent like this one here um because see that's the difference like look at this this is 2020 I want to say this is still 2020 maybe early 2021 this is just a couple of weeks ago same I just did like a remaster look at how ugly this is like this <laughs> that that is much this right here is a much better panel than this is this is a little bit better too it's got the bigger smile and the and the like exaggeration a little bit and the uh the head angle here being a little bit different it's essentially the same same thing but it's stronger and i think because well reading through this animation stuff like Here's another here's another rooster here like the difference between this one and this one 
this heck this was only i want to say a couple of months ago maybe i did this one i think um oh this is just true life 24 year old comic artist and I haven't seen the sun in two years at least the pay sucks Yeah, but that's how it's supposed to work, Citizen Rona says. Uh, it could have gone in the opposite direction and gotten worse. Well, it depends on who you ask, I suppose, right? <laughs> Some people might have preferred this. A lot of these, though, these were these were speed... <laughs> Is, am I manga? Uh, a lot of these were speed sketches because uh, I was obsessed with getting fast. Like, you know, I, what I should have done was worked on the fundamentals worked on uh the basics and solidified that foundation and then worked on speed um but i was just i was obsessed with going fast really fast and the problem with that is it gives really inconsistent results here's another early early stat one um it's when i was handwriting oh look at that terrible lettering i've gotten better since then but Oh, this one was just a couple of weeks ago, I think, too. Um, yeah, see, I had, I had to redo this one because it was garbage. This is a little better. If I redo it again, I'm sure it'll be even better. Um, enough of that. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I've been, I just got this book on Mark Davis. One of the nine old men. My goodness. Some of the art that I hadn't seen of his that wasn't animated wise. Holy crap. It's amazing. Now. Yeah. Okay. New layer. Let's go back to orange. Back to formula. Um, that's the kind of thing that excites me just like seeing progression and that's in independent comics it's one of those things where you know you want to encourage people to draw because you know if, if they're getting better at it you get to sit and watch that progression through the years until they become something absolutely amazing some of them might give it up and go do something else because you know, if you're really just focused on the money, uh, you'll probably burn out pretty quick. But if you know you're really loving this stuff, not unlike Noah, I think that kid's gonna do all right. Seems like he's really got a, a head for for loving comics and drawing comics and stuff like that. I think I think that's a good combination. That drive. Jaybot says, I am stoked about Procreate's new animation program for iPad. Do they have an animation program? I've got this, uh, is it this one here? I think Sketchbook Pro. Let's open this up for a second. Sketchbook Pro's got some animation stuff. Actually, so does Clip Paint. It's got animation right up here. Um, but Sketchbook's got, let's see, where is it? This is a free thing, too, so. New flipbook. New empty flipbook. Yeah, let's just do that. So, you know, you got like, you can do your like, da, 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 and then your next frame, add a frame. Uh, I think you could do like transparent stuff in here too. Like, there's that one. And then, you know, you can play it. Oh, wow. Look at my amazing cartoon. <laughs> but um, I haven't actually sat down and played with it yet. No, we're not going to save that. Um,. Yeah. So let me get like a pan brand now, like a, yeah, new layer. No, I don't like that. I like a, yeah, yeah, it's not bad.
know, I remember this really great uh, picture. I think it was supposed to be for the next the next Fantasia. It's called Music Anna, I think, or something like that. Some crazy name. Anyways, to this was a fascinating thing to me to um, showcase, like you know, different stories or whatever from what it would be. This artist just did this one big scene of, um, you know, like a, a bunch of animals having a party, having fun, laughing and stuff like that. And then, you know, uh, like a, one looking in angrily from a window. It was all just one picture. But then he went ahead and he shot it like just different parts of it at a time. And you could kind of see the entire story play out. You know, you'd have the persons, the, the people kind of laughing and stuff and then you'd have the people at the table laughing and then you'd see the the uh, ominous guy at the window looking at them and like it was just off of one picture it was kind of cool i'd love to be able to do something like that this guitar is way off by the way like way off maybe if i go up here and i just kind of cut this out eh, i think the perspective's off it's probably, if I'm honest, I think it's probably like this. Uh, this thing here, which means I'd have to use a watery brush. Get rid of this. That's one of the things I love most about watercolor, just like watercolor itself is um, it's one of those few program you know paints you can really erase i mean granted you know with other paints you can just paint right over it but with watercolor you can like erase i always love that i think it's cool really got to get back into my my watercolor sets even more i think it's one cool thing about doing stuff on here like it does train you so that you can go and actually use set now you know what i think i'm gonna try since they're transparent, let's try purple. Let's see here. If, uh... Yeah, I'll just give like a cool, cool shadow on a on a cool character. go it's not bad i suppose it makes it look a little more warm maybe you can kind of see the red it's okay texture yeah then what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna erase a little bit here and there for some highlights what was I saying before oh yeah it's a weird thing when you get online and you get creators that are sitting there fighting with each other. And I know this kind of thing has taken place over comics for, you know, like decades. But I'm in no way feeling like I need to get into any of that stuff. So as far as this channel is concerned, it's kind of just going to have to be off on the side. Oh. Um, drawing. There we go. As it should be. Comics and art. Although, you know, I, I feel like comic art gets just overall art 
doesn't get enough appreciation, you know, like... People do look at comic book art a lot, but I mean, I don't see a lot of people just kind of discussing regular art. You know, like some painters, at least in this space, in this, in this, in these groups and stuff like that, like painters and stuff. Because I think really, if you look at some of these, yeah, uh, regular artists that, you know, like that aren't comic book artists really can influence a comic book creator in their style and their, and their stuff. Get another layer. Get dark green. There we go. It's not bad. Definitely more elaborate than some of my other ones, that's for sure. That's okay. Practicing at a higher level means you're just going to get better. I got to do more of that. That's one thing that it doesn't bother me, but I mean, I notice it, you know, online, you get a lot of art, but most of it is just like you're, you're, you know, almost like you're doing a sketch for a turnaround, you know, um, the person's just standing there. They aren't doing anything. Uh, just looking at you or just off to the side, no real action, no like life in it. And I think, well, that's good for learning proportions and anatomy and stuff like that. Like it, it's a hindrance to just stay in that comfort zone of just drawing the character standing or sitting. You know, you want to, you want to draw them doing something. Engaging in an activity like eating. I don't know. Andy Smith is absolutely uh, constantly shines a light on comic art. And every once in a while, he'll get into you know, like some paintings and stuff, too. I, I appreciate Andy's channel for that. Um, I, I try to, when I can, watch that stuff. It's inspirational me. I know Richard Friend does it, too. He'll, he'll show off painters and all manner of different uh, artists on there. And he'll, he and Kelsey will talk a lot about just different stuff. Um, and I think that's more needed. You know, it can't all be Jim Lee and Todd McFarlane. It really can't. I noticed that. I remember when uh, Aaron was Aaron Lopresti was talking about like um, who would who would you think would draw this book or that book or something like that? And a lot of the people's suggestions were really just you know your. Um, your basic, the basic, you know, the, the usual suspects like Todd McFarlane would be good. Oh, you know, um, Jim Lee would be good. And, and you know, I was, I was just thinking about how many amazing artists are out there that we all know and love, but we never actually talk about them because it's, you know, you've got your, your main people. Uh, j says, can we talk about over rendering? I feel like indie books love their rendering but it zaps the energy out of the art you know i've talked about that before i think for some they're really trying to mimic like your uh well jim lee the, the scott williams style or um mark silvestry what he's kind of gone into as far now those guys they know what they're doing when they're rendering um but i think for newbies for people that are, are a little bit less than than comfortable um it's it's a way to hide your mistakes it's a way to hide your your um deficiencies in in your art marcus kilgris says i don't even like jim lee or todd mcfarlane that much you know the more i get to know about art the more i see jim lee is kind of stiff a lot of his characters look very much the same although you can't, that's, I mean, you know, that's kind of an artist. It's like the offspring. All, most of their songs sound the same because they use like four chords, but in different combinations. And Green Day too. Um, but uh, everybody's got go-to stuff. John or uh, uh, John Byrne, everybody loves John Byrne, but his women, he pretty much just likes 
he just swaps the hairstyle out. It's the same face, typically the same body shape. He just swaps the hairstyle out, and, <laughs> and you know. Um, McFarlane, yeah, I, I think for them, you know, a lot of people just love the energy of the art. But like Billy's said before, the uh, anatomy was way off. Way off. Uh, his eyes sometimes were kind of weird. Hold on a second. I'm going to run and grab another drink. Where's uh, where's my magical? There it is. I'll be right back. And I'm back. Uh, well, you know, I got I got caught up in that when I was a kid. I loved X-Men number one. Most kids, I think, did. The wild cats and stuff. The older I got, um, the more expressive I liked my art. Um, I mean, I'm not going to say I hate Todd McFarlane or Jim Lee. Uh, I, I liked Hush a lot, although it was kind of stiff. I will say I was not a huge fan of Superman for tomorrow. But that might have also been a little bit more on Brian Azzarello. I, I, he's good for crime, like 100 Bullets. I read a little bit of it. It's not bad. But for Batman and Superman, that guy, he needs to stay away. He goes too hard. I think he goes too mature. I'll never forget. It was in, like, issue two of Broken City, Batman. Main continuity, main book. Just after uh, Hush, I think. He's got this scene, and it was, uh, the artist was uh, Rizzo. Was it Frank Russo? Rizzo? Russo. Uh, he's a lot like Christian Rossi. Or Christian Rossi's a lot like him, either way. Uh, not bad. Really high con contrast art. Um, but there's a scene where it's, this lady's thrown to the ground, and then there's a panel... Of him unbuckling his pants and unzipping before Batman comes in to, uh, you know, to stop him. And I swear, that kind of thing should not be, not be in a Batman book. Not a main continuity one. If you want to do some off to the side kind of like mini series sort of thing like Dark Knight Returns, whatever. I never thought that should be in the main, main stuff. Uh, Marcus Kilgore says, you can see Aaron and... Uh, was it Harham? Harham? Kind of bite their tongues when... Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, when uh, Liefeld and Lee is brought up. <laughs> yeah, I know. John's John, of course, naturally is big into Liefeld. And Lee and stuff like that. Uh, Sinus Rona said, there's only so much spidey crotch a person can take. <laughs> you know, as far as Spider-Man goes, when I was a kid... Uh, Junior was my my Spider Man, uh, Jun you know John Romita Junior, and probably at the time, well actually I was when I was a teenager, um, but at the time when I was a kid, I want to say it was Bagley was the guy, you know the way he drew Venom, obviously Carnage because he created him. Um, was that Bagley? Yeah, it was Bagley. I was thinking I was getting him and Grummet mixed up for a second. Um. Yeah, I liked. I liked those guys. Yeah, mine was uh, J Box was Bag Bagley too. Yep. Um, I, I really, I really got. I was really fond of John Romita Jr. Spider Man. I really liked his Daredevil too. I just got the two epics that cover most. I think most of his and uh, was it Nascenti? Their run on Daredevil. Yeah, and Nascenti. Um. I'm not a huge fan of Junior Superman. His Hulk was okay. I liked his Daredevil and Spider-Man. Um, so I don't know. What do you guys think about this here? Should I ink it? Or does it not look too dang bad? Is it just penciled? I kind of like it. Let me just... 
merge with layer below. I'm going to merge this color. Merge. Merge. Nope, I don't want to merge with the paper. Yeah. Not bad. JBot likes the pencil and watercolor look. Right on. Yeah. So I think maybe I'll leave that at that. What are we at? We're at an hour. Perfect. Uh, let's see. How do I want to... Let's just, let's choose a font. Got a bunch of them here to choose from. Let's take, let's take something a little fancier. Not too fancy, but fancy enough. You know, I feel like, I feel like, I don't know. Earlier this week, I was kind of wondering if I was getting jaded with comics. A little bit. But I don't know that it's comics so much as just kind of like... I'm not excited about what's going on at crowdfunding right now. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's too long to wait between books. And, and things will get more exciting again. But like the Second Chance campaigns, the... You know, Ethan just launched a... a variant with trump on the the front or the cover <laughs> it just i it just didn't even register with me i i wasn't excited about it i i don't know i'm re i'm excited to get the books that i've ordered though but i'm not 100 percent sure where this is going for me i'm optimistic i'm not becoming a hater like i said i'm not going anywhere but Yeah. We need more fun, quick stories, stuff like Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah, I think so. I think that kind of thing is a little bit lost. Like I said, the only problem is with those kind of stories, um, it tends to be seen as a kid's story. And I wonder if I should do something about And try something um and i think that that kind of harms sales it's 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 funny we we all want to <laughs> stuff like bone everything is edgy or superheroes and boobies yeah that's that's a that's a large part of the brand i'll say i'll tell, I'll tell you that um wow okay um i don't know if i can make this work no, nah, I don't like that. I like the white background. Um, it's, it's a hard thing when when you when you're trying to make all ages stuff, but you're trying to appeal to adults to buy it that might or might not have kids. That's where your marketing comes in. Um, I don't know where I where I will go as far as my book goes. Uh, to tell you the truth, I don't think it actually has an audience. The, st the one that I was working on that I've gotten 22 pages pretty much inked. I don't really think it has an audience. That's the trouble. And if it does, it's a very, very small audience. It's really just kind of done for me. Um, so I'll have to maybe finish that. I don't know if I'm going to print it. And if I do, maybe it'll be like 10, 20 copies. Nothing huge at all. Nothing expensive. Um, until I figure out what I'm doing with that. But anyways... Hey guys, thanks for joining me today, tonight, again. I keep on wondering if I should hold off and not do these every night. You know, kind of so it does remain random. It is a random draw stream, R RDS. <laughs> uh, so it seems more random, or if I should go ahead and do them more and just kind of forsake the specialness, you know? Um but I guess that's that's a decision that's that's more up to you guys to keep on showing up. 
maybe I'll keep on doing these end of the night streams on stream. End of the night sketches on stream, rather. Um, I don't know. I suppose we'll have to see. But until then, I'll see you when I see you next. <laughs> <laughs>